In this video, I'll show you how to build the Puma Abbe Condenser and fit it to a Puma Foundation Scope. The Abbe Condenser lets you use higher magnification objectives and specialist forms of microscopy like dark ground illumination and Schleeren phase contrast. This is the first in a series of videos that document the Puma Illumination System. The Illumination System comprises a large set of many options and so it was given its own development name, the Dominus Illumination System. For that reason, you will see that all the Puma CAD models pertaining to illumination are prefixed with DI, which stands for Dominus Illuminator. The Puma Foundation Scope has a mirror illuminator only. There is no substage lens system. This means that it can only give good quality images with relatively low magnification objectives. To see well with high magnification objectives, you will need to add a condenser lens system to the illumination path. Higher magnification objectives have higher numerical apertures, so they accept light from a large range of angles. Light that enters at a higher angle encodes higher resolution features. So, such objectives need strong light coming in at all angles to give the best quality image. Failure to provide this results in an image that looks over-contrasted and lacking in resolution, with diffraction ringing artifacts. A reliable way to concentrate the incoming light into a wide-angled cone beam is by means of a two-lens condenser system originally devised by Ernst Abbe at around 1870. The open-source Puma system has its own version of an Abbe condenser with a numerical aperture of about 0.938. The Puma condenser can also be oiled for use with oil immersion objectives, allowing for a useful magnification of up to a thousand times when used with a times 10 eyepiece. The Puma Condenser module also has the advantage of easy access to the condenser's Fourier plane by means of a filter slot mechanism. This allows the use of custom filters or the powerful TFT screen-based spatial light modulator to shape the condenser's aperture. This makes it easy to achieve dark ground illumination microscopy and Schlieren phase contrast, which I will illustrate towards the end of this video. Most other microscopes have only a simple iris diaphragm for the condenser to vary its numerical aperture to match the numerical aperture of the current objective. These are the parts and some of the tools you'll need to build the Puma Abbe condenser. Details are provided in the video description. First, remove any support structures and other 3D printing artifacts from the parts. Note that when printing the models, you have a choice of two condenser interface adapters. I include here the Condenser to Mirror Holder Socket adapter, because today we are interfacing the condenser to the mirror holder. However, if you wanted to use the condenser with the curler illuminator, you would instead print the condenser to upper collector adapter. Now prepare the M4 thumb screws by simply pressing a 12mm long M4 hex bolt into the 3D printed thumb screw head. You will need a total of four M4 thumb screws to fix the condenser to the stage, but if you are upgrading a foundation scope, you can use the two pre-existing M4 thumb screws and just add two more. These condenser thumb screws do not have a nut on the other side of the thumb screw control to fix it in place, so there is a chance that you will dislodge the plastic control from the bolt during use if you press down on the plastic part while using it, so try to avoid doing that. Now insert the lenses into the condenser 2330 lens holder using the procedure I will show you. Ensure you work on a clean, soft surface to avoid scratching the surfaces of the lenses. I use a paper towel on the work surface to help with that. 
During assembly, you will need to press down quite hard on this work surface so ensure it is strong enough and won't crack or damage under pressure. First, lay the 30mm lens flat side down on the work surface. Screw the protective cap onto the 23mm surface of the empty lens holder to give you a broad flat surface to press on as you do not want to damage your fingers by pressing on the thin rim of this part of the lens holder. Put the empty lens holder over the lens and push down firmly and evenly all over to force fit the 30mm lens into the recess. You may need to use some padding on top to prevent hurting yourself due to the pressure. Note that the 30mm lens will only go part way into the recess. About half a millimetre will stand proud of the lens holder surface. Check that an equal amount of lens glass protrudes all around the circumference and, if it is not even, lay the assembly flat and apply directed pressure to the more proud part to even it out. If this doesn't work, remove the lens and start again. Once the 30mm lens is firmly and evenly fixed in place, ensure the lens holder cavity and the convex parts of both lenses are clean and free from any dust, fingerprints, grease, stray plastic, etc. You won't get another chance to do this. Then insert the 23mm lens into its recess as shown and press firmly to get it in evenly. Be advised that in my experience this force fit assembly is a permanent fixture. You can only remove the lenses by heating and deforming the plastic to get them out. For example by placing the whole assembly into a dish of hot water to soften the plastic and use protective gloves when distorting the lens holder due to the heat. You will then need to reprint the condenser 2330 lens holder to attempt reassembly. Now screw the other parts of the condenser assembly together with the four M3 screws. Take care to get the filter tray the right way up and facing the right direction. This is with the thin membrane of the filter tray in contact with the glass of the 30mm lens and with the opening of the filter tray facing the same direction as the flattened part of the flange of the lens holder. Finally, print some condenser aperture filters and test the filter slot to ensure smooth action with the filter clicking in place as it should. Now that we have a fully assembled Abbe condenser, I'll show you how to fit it. To upgrade a Puma foundation scope to use a condenser, we will need the Puma Foundation Scope with its original mirror illuminator, the Puma Abbe Condenser Module, and the Condenser to Mirror Holder Socket Adapter, the Substage Condenser Gripper Brackets and four M4 thumb screws, and the Long Legs Stand System because once the condenser is added, the Short Legs System will no longer provide sufficient clearance. Also, a 10mm spanner may help to fix this securely.
First, remove the optical tube and lay it carefully to one side. Invert the scope and remove the thumb screws that hold the mirror to base plate attachment in place. Remove the attachment and remove the mirror suspend system from it. We won't be using the attachment, so put that to one side. Remove the short legs from the stage and ensure there is a spacer on all three legs of the scope. So if you didn't attach the back leg spacer, attach it now. Assemble and attach the long legs stand system as follows. First add an M6 nut to each spacer. Next loosen the rear leg locking thumb screw on the stand and insert the rear long leg through its hole in the stand. Do not tighten the thumb screw at this point. Take the adjustable rear leg extender and ensure the fixing grub screw is either removed or screwed back so that it doesn't protrude into the cavity. Now push the rear leg extender up as far as it will go onto the rear long leg. Slide the base stand down the rear leg till the stand contacts the adjustable rear leg extender and then tighten the thumb screw. You may now remove the adjustable rear leg extender if you don't intend to use it. The rear leg extender is only used when you want the microscope stage to be level. For ergonomic viewing, it is not used so the scope tilts back at an ergonomic angle. With the long leg system assembled, slide the holes over the bolts of the spacers. This may be a bit fiddly or a tight fit, so bear with it and try to move them all a little bit at a time to ensure everything is level as you go down. Once in place, fix everything with three more M6 nuts and tighten them a little to ensure they don't come loose. A 10mm spanner may be used here Take care not to over tighten. We can now fit the Abbe condenser. The condenser in a professional microscope will have its own rack and pinion focus adjustment to raise and lower the condenser relative to the top surface of the stage. The Puma Abbe condenser can also be focused, but with Puma we use one or more fixed thin spacer washers to achieve this height adjustment. Place a single condenser flange spacer over the condenser flange. Take care to ensure it goes all the way down and that the flat edge of the spacer lines up with the flat edge of the condenser flange. Without any spacers, the condenser top lens will protrude a little above the top surface of the stage and you won't be able to hold the condenser very tightly against the stage with the condenser gripper brackets. With one spacer in place, the top of the condenser will be about level with the top surface of the stage and this is about right for most observations. If you want to lower the condenser further below the stage, you can do that by simply adding more spacers. Now clasp the condenser to the base plate with the condenser gripper brackets. First put one of the brackets over the condenser flange and fix it to the stage with two of the M4 thumb screws, but do not tighten them all the way. Be careful to position the condenser with the flattened edge of the flange facing the front of the stage. Slide the condenser as far as it will go towards the bracket that is already in place and insert the second bracket and M4 thumb screws.
Thread the condenser to mirror holder socket adapter to the bottom of the condenser and make it finger tight. Professional microscopes have condenser centration controls, usually in the form of two horizontal sprung thumb screws at the sides with a fixed sprung pin at the back. The Puma Abbey condenser also has a centration adjustment, but this is achieved by manual sliding of the condenser around in its well, then tightening the thumb screws to fix it in place. You can always loosen the thumb screws a bit to readjust the centration as needed and tighten them again as required. The most accurate centration of the condenser can only really be achieved with the curler illuminator in place, so in this case just center it visually as best you can by looking at the condenser from on top and try to get it centered in the hole in the stage. Note that the reason the condenser flange is flattened at the front is so you can move the condenser forwards for a good distance without the flange catching on the front focus post bolt head. If you did not orientate the condenser or a flange spacer in this way, then you will never be able to get the condenser properly centered. It will always be offset a little backwards. You can now fit the mirror suspense system into the mirror holder socket by squeezing the free ends together and sliding it in at an angle. Now you can put the microscope the right way up, reattach the optical tube, and the upgrade is complete. Here are some before and after images taken without a condenser on the left and with the Puma Abbey condenser on the right, both using mirror illumination. The specimen is an h and &E stained section of human colon. The main benefits of a condenser for ordinary transillumination microscopy are seen with high power objectives such as the Titans 40. Note in the condenser less microscope that the image is dark with coarse hypercontrasted features and exaggerated diffraction fringes that obscure detail. By comparison, the microscope with the condenser in place shows a brighter image with more natural contrast and improved resolution. Also note that the reduced brightness that comes without a condenser is not fully appreciated here because the camera that took these photos compensated for absolute brightness with automatic gain. This image shows you a more faithful representation of what you would see if you were to look down the microscope by eye. With low magnification objectives, such as times 4, there does not at first seem to be much advantage of having a condenser. In fact, there is even a disadvantage in that the condenser image has uneven illumination being darker at the periphery compared to the condenser-less microscope. There are some things you can do to fix this, but I'll discuss those in another tutorial. For now, however, note that without a condenser, any small speck of dust or debris overlying the sample appears exaggerated, as shown here. Also, if we zoom into this part of the image, we can see that not only are overlying debris less visible with the condenser, but also the condenser provides crisper detail, distinguishing individual cells in the lamina propria, for example, even with this low magnification times 4 objective lens, because the condenser makes fuller use of the lens's numerical aperture. Now I'll show you the basics of using the aperture filter slot for performing dark ground microscopy and Schleieren phase contrast. The split-screen video you're about to see shows the view down the ocular of the microscope and, simultaneously, an external view of the microscope. The microscope camera is the Optark 5 megapixel USB 2 wide field ocular camera and the specimen is a thin section of unstained plant tissue from an Optark pre-prepared 
test slide set. First, I will demonstrate dark ground microscopy, also called dark field microscopy, using a times 4 objective. For dark ground, we use a central obscuring disk as the filter. The size of the disk must be matched to the numerical aperture of the objective, so it is quite small here because the times 4 lens has a low numerical aperture. Note that you can hardly see the tissue with normal illumination. But as soon as the dark ground filter is inserted into the condenser, the tissue section dramatically stands out. Note also the technique I use for pushing out the filter from the condenser. This helps prevent inadvertently decentering the condenser and also makes it less likely to bend the filter as you remove it, something that will be very important when using the delicate electronic spatial light modulator TFT filter. But that will be the subject of another video. Now I will demonstrate Schleer and phase contrast using a times 40 objective. For Schlieren you typically will use a half filled aperture, but adding a central partially blocking spot helps improve contrast further for direct vision. This results, as you see here, in a kind of C-shaped aperture. Again, note the dramatic increase in contrast of this unstained cellular plant tissue when the filter is inserted. Once more, note the technique used to remove the filter. Now, this was just a quick basic overview. I'll deal in more detail with these specialist modes of illumination in another tutorial. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and support the open source Puma project by hitting the big red subscribe button. If you have social media accounts, also please share this video on those accounts using the YouTube share button. Thanks for watching.